Hello, I'm Dan, the Lettings Director at the Property Centre in Taunton. I wanted to do a video today about why landlords get so much hate. Over the last seven years working in a state agency, I've often been the middleman between the landlord and tenant. And I've always observed that general rule of thumb, landlords aren't very much liked. They're not celebrated in the media. And I've spent the morning on Google and Reddit looking at some of the things tenants are saying about landlords. This video would explore some of the things that came up and it's a little bit in defense of some landlords in some of the aspects. So why are landlords so hated? Number one, the first argument I found on Reddit this morning was that landlords push up property prices by buying a lot of the affordable stock. So if landlords are buying a lot of the affordable stuff, first time buyers can't buy these properties. In defense of landlords, over the last sort of 10, five, three years, they have been leaving the market, selling their investment properties up rapidly. So landlords have been leaving the market. There's not been as many landlords buying in the market, yet what have property prices done in the last five years, um, especially over 2020 to 2021, 2021 to 2022, property prices absolutely soared. So I don't know how true this argument is. In my opinion, having worked with a lot of property investors and landlords, they tend to buy the properties that a lot of first time buyers don't actually want. Properties that aren't mortgageable, properties that need work. A lot of the time, landlords and buy to let investors can be um, your investment sort of builders, that kind of thing. There's a lot of accidental landlords as well. People who buy a property can't necessarily sell it or the market's not as good as what it was or they want to go and travel temporarily but keep hold of their property. So they're accidental landlords. So I think in that case, it's not the case of them buying up properties, restricting stock. So I'm not too sure how true this necessarily is. Number two is TV. So there are some interesting programs on the television that show 1% of really bad landlords and tenants, to be fair. One of them being nightmare tenants and slum landlords. 90% of the valuations I go out to where it's them letting for the first time will bring up this TV show. They're like, oh my God, the tenants are going to be like this. Is my property going to be wrecked? And this causes a massive amount of concern. I have probably set up about a thousand tenancies over the course of my career. I can count on one hand the ones that have gone really, really wrong. Um, so this, I think, gives people a bit of a false perception of what the general landlord and the general tenant are like. Number three is rent prices. Um, it's a hard one to argue this one, to be honest. I mean, rent prices have gone up massively in the last couple of years. Part of the reason for that, though, is landlords are hated. The government have made it a lot harder and more expensive to be a landlord. And with the recent hike in interest, um, interest on mortgages, it's meant that a lot of landlords have left the market, that the supply has been restricted. There's a massive, massive demand more now than ever before for rental properties. So the competition is a lot higher. One of the properties that we listed recently had 72 leads in a weekend. When there's that much competition for a rental property, the competition alone will push prices up. You kind of got to ask yourself the question, if you were a landlord with 50 to 100 inquiries on your property and you could get more rent, would you ask for more rent? I have to feel for the most part, people probably would. So I think this is a little bit reflective of the market in general. I think where a lot of landlords have been pushed out of the rental market, where things have got more difficult, things have got more expensive, there's more legal hoops to jump through, has restricted the supply of available rental properties in a market where the demand has gone through the roof because of more international students, more people moving to the UK who need short term rentals. The competition has pushed prices up. It's not landlords sat there in a room saying, let's charge more money to these tenants. So rent prices is kind of part of a bigger problem. Um, part of this problem a little bit, I think if landlords were a little bit more looked after, there'd be more of them in the market, there'd be a greater supply, there'd be less competition, thus rent prices wouldn't be so ridiculous. Maintenance. Maintenance is a tricky one. Um, I don't think you can be forgiven for a landlord for leaving a tenant without heating. Um, obviously, a lot of the times I've dealt with landlords and tenants, I have been the managing agent. So maintenance has been sorted because we keep on top of it in um, 
in relation to the legislation. But maintenance, I have heard some horror stories about tenants being left over winter without heating, about damp, so on and so forth. There is some legislation that's come into play recently that has the Human Habitation Act that should hopefully help this. Um, and there are a lot of recourses now that tenants can do to um, go about landlords aren't doing the necessary maintenance. But there's no excuse for this. If you are a landlord, it does come with a, a bill of maintenance. Keep on top of it, factor it in from the very beginning if you are a landlord and don't don't avoid it. It's a necessary cost. It's something that comes with it. Some landlords will be a little bit begrudging if it's something that the tenants have caused. Um, we get a lot of damp complaints where it's often a result of tenants drying clothes in the property. So if you're a tenant, be a responsible tenant as well and don't expect landlords to come and change light bulbs for you. But maintenance is one of these four where it's kind of inexcusable to be on top of it. So what is the conclusion to this? Um, Landlords get a really hard rap, in my opinion. Uh, essentially, they are risking an asset to provide a service which is very much in demand. There is a massive prop uh, There is a massive demand for rentals as opposed to purchase properties from people who are students in the area who need something that's more flexible. So they are risking an asset. They are providing a service ultimately, and they are absolutely slammed all the time in the media and for a general rule of thumb. People don't like them. I think if landlords were treated a little bit better, they'd probably be able to provide a slightly better rental service. More of them would be in the market, which would bring up the supply. If the supply was higher, it would bring rental prices down. It wouldn't be so competitive for tenants. So as much as this might not be popular, I feel like we should give landlords a break a little bit. Another thing in defense of landlords, I've worked with some absolutely fantastic landlords over the course of COVID where people were made unemployed or people were struggling with rent. I had landlords who practically called me to offer their tenants rent breaks. I've got landlords who go in and replace kitchens for tenants. I've got landlords who purposely keep their rents low to look after and keep the tenants that they're happy with. So there are some fantastic landlords out there. I've got the pleasure of working with quite a few of them. And yeah, in general, give landlords a little bit of a break, cut them a bit more slack and let's stop being so harsh on them.